Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. Our top story this hour, deep divisions over Greece's debt crisis. Overnight talks are continuing into the Brussels morning. It's thought the leaders are getting closer to an agreement, one which would need to be ratified by the Greek parliament within just a few days. I'm Christian Fraser, live in Brussels. We've had almost 14 hours of negotiations, all manner of bilateral meetings, and still we have no agreement. In the last hour, the final and sixth draft of the Greek proposals has been presented to the 19 Eurozone leaders. And welcome once again to our other main stories this hour. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock with the business stories. Of course, we're looking at Greece with markets around the world waiting and watching for any outcome on the Greek debt crisis talks in Brussels. For now, in Asia, markets are headed higher. And of course, we're going to start in Brussels. Greece has come under intense pressure to make new concessions at emergency talks taking place with other Eurozone leaders, the talks intended to find a way for the country to stay in the single currency. They've continued through the night. The leaders are now understood to be working on the sixth draft of an agreement, as we just heard from the BBC's Christian Fraser. So let's go live to Christian now. Drip, drip of information coming out. Christian, what do we know now? Well, we have a new dawn in the Eurozone. Or at least the morning light is beginning to filter through the glass ceiling here in the press hall. I think metaphorically speaking, we might be waiting for that new dawn for some time because, as you say, we've had some 14 hours of negotiations all the way through the night, all manner of bilateral meetings to try and twist the arm of Alexis Tsipras and the Greek negotiators. And still, we don't have a full agreement. What we have is a sixth draft of the Greek proposals. Through the course of the night, bits have been added, bits have been taken away and we understand there are still one or two sticking points that aren't to the suiting of the Greek side. We've spoken over the last 24 hours about trust, this precious little of it uh, that remains uh, within the Eurozone meeting. People don't believe that the Greek side are going to enact many of the proposals that are on this piece of paper and that is really what is slowing up, I think, the negotiation. Well, there's been plenty of reaction, as you would expect, over the last 14 hours with a look at some of that. Here is our Europe editor, Katia Adler. An emergency Eurozone summit with Greece the focus of attention and a warning. Today, it said, is the deadline for Greece staying in the Eurozone. You've heard it before. You've heard this before, too. Another upbeat message from the Greek Prime Minister, despite gloomy mood music. We can reach an agreement tonight if all parties want it. But do they? The situation is extremely difficult. There will be tough talks and there won't be unity at any price. So why are Eurozone leaders continuing on this merry-go-round? Why don't they just slash Greece's debt or push it out? The answer? Because they're unsure what to do for the best, not just for Greece, but in their own interest. Remember, the Eurozone is only just clawing its way out of its 2008 financial crisis. From France to Italy to Germany, politics and economics are being affected by Greece. And so is unity in the wider EU. Big powers, France and Germany, normally the closest of allies, are at odds over whether Greece can be trusted to honour a new agreement. Greece says it needs at least 50 billion euros and a restructuring of its debts to get its finances in order. In return, creditors want Greece to clean up its act, to reform, crack down on corruption. But will it? The main obstacles to moving forward is lack of trust. So I would like to see the Greek government to take concrete actions starting tomorrow in Parliament to implement measures that are needed for Greece in the first place. We have lost so much time, we cannot afford to lose more time anymore. The people of Greece feel the same way. With every passing day, their economy gets weaker, their prospects bleaker. 82-year-old Lukas Konstantinou is a potter, one of many Greeks whose livelihood has been smashed by their country's crisis. And for the business unit team, it's been a marathon. Um, was reading, obviously... Thank you very much. I want you to look at, actually, just... What her finance ministry think, what...
which it may promise on paper. Um, $50 billion of state assets. Our Europe correspondent Chris Morris, who's been following all the different briefings that we've been getting. Document they're considering. Well, there seem to be two things which the, the Greeks are unhappy with still. One is the role of the IMF, and the other one is the size of this privatization fund that they want to set up. In particular, uh, German officials have been insisting on a fund worth 50 billion euros. Now, the Greeks and many other EU officials actually say that there's no way they have. $50 billion of state assets that they can privatise. That figure's got to be a lot lower. They changed the language slightly during the course of the night from 50 billion to up to 50 billion, uh, but I think it's quite a sensitive issue in Greece anyway, privatisation, and having such a huge unobtainable figure, it seems to be a red line for Mr Tsipras. So those are things which people still aren't happy about on the Greek side. On the other side, I think there's still countries that harbour doubts about whether Greece is really going to do any of the things which it may promise on paper. And one of the things that was on, what, draft number three or four was uh, a line on the bottom which said we will talk about a time out, a five-year uh, period away from the Eurozone for Greece if this negotiation doesn't bear fruit. That's now disappeared from the text. It seems to have done, yeah. That again was, a, was an idea which had its origins in the German finance ministry, which has been one of the places which, if you like, has been most fiscally hardline, most sceptical of uh, what Greece is trying to do. It's probably significant that this leaders' meeting obviously is a political meeting. It's the highest political level. And it's not the German finance minister, Wolfgang Schäuble, who's in there. It's Angela Merkel. And of course she knows what her finance ministry think, what many of the people in her own party think, how sceptical they are about Greece. But she's also got to take that broader political view of Germany and its place in Europe and the place of the single currency and the idea of European unity. She, it seems, wants to get a deal done, even though there's clearly some reluctance to, to go ahead and simply trust the Greek government, which is why, over the next few days, if they can actually reach an agreement, well, it's, what, 7.30 in the morning now, soon, we hope, uh, then it would be two days, maybe three maximum, of measures going through the Greek parliament. If that was all done, if that was done to the uh, satisfaction of everyone else, perhaps the German Bundestag could meet on Thursday uh, to give the German government the green light to start negotiations and then another meeting of Eurozone finance ministers on Friday or possibly at the weekend it that would mean true. the it start of me negotiation. Another meeting. Surely not, surely not. Um, yeah, and all sorts of ramifications, of course, for Angela Merkel. We're looking at front page headlines, which have been very critical about Germany. Chris, for the moment, thank you very much. I want you to look at, actually, just as our cameraman's panning off, Chris, look at the stamina of our correspondent who's been going all the way through the night. I want to show you a picture that we pulled off social media in the early hours of the morning. Not everyone has the stamina of Chris. Uh, look at this man here. Uh, collapsed under the table. There have been gallons of coffee drunk uh, in the coffee bar through the course of the evening. Uh, we're still standing, at least for the moment, Adnan, and we'll keep standing until that deal finally materialises. Very impressive, Christian and Chris. Thank you very much to both of you. Actually, Sally, it is a point, is that when you're extremely tired, how do you negotiate effectively? It is actually it is a, a huge serious point. point. Yeah. It is a huge point, and, and I... Um was reading obviously we're all reading all sorts of different <laughs> wire copy from those journalists who are drinking coffee through the night one of them i read was that Wolf wolfgang schäuble who is the german finance minister snapped at mario draghi i'm not who stupid is the president of the yeah. european central bank and they're you know it's going to happen isn't it yeah that's it right, is yeah. going to happen yeah, he did snap I but read that these as well. men and women angela merkel being the woman and Christine Lagarde to a degree. They've all been here before, some years ago. Yeah. I remember being in this position before where they'd literally been right through the night and, oh my goodness, and you'd see those press conferences at the end of the marathon talks and uh, those different players involved were just exhausted. But the deal has to be done. They have to hammer out deal, a deal at some point. Now, of course, whilst all this has been going on through the night in Brussels, it's been a trading day, a brand new trading week starting in Asia. And, of course, they've all been expecting some kind of outcome in the hours that have passed. But as you've been hearing, we haven't got one yet. We're not, uh, we're not near an agreement yet. But for Japan, up 1.5%, Hong Kong up by a third of a percent. And you can see we've got gains across the board. The euro very wobbly. Uh, in general, it's actually falling versus most major currencies today. The Japanese yen in particular, if we can see the currencies, hopefully it'll it'll spring to life for me. I'm clicking, but it won't. But just to say the yen, the euro is down versus the yen. It's down versus the dollar. Um, there you go. Someone's done it for me, you see. 
Um, uh, you can see how it's trading right now. The oil price is down significantly. That's to do with Iran, actually, and the deal that could be struck today with regards to Iran. Of course, if uh, more oil is pumped into markets, that could bring down uh, the price. So that's with regards to the, the Iran story, which Adnan will be talking about in just a few minutes' time. But also, as well, out of China, we've had some fairly good news about their economy out, and that's helped... Asian markets trade today. Uh, basically, some trade numbers out of Ch uh, China were better than expected. I'll have detail on all of that in World Business Report. And also, I'll be talking to Tanya Beckett, who is in Athens for us this week. Again, for the business unit team, it's been a marathon for them as well as they kept across the situation in Greece. It's Tanya's turn to cover the story from Athens this week. So I'll be talking to her. I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, Sally.